Okay, so this is the first Raspberry Pi version of Ubuntu 22.04, uh, and this is the beta version of Budgie. Uh, thanks to Tony Baldwin for letting me know about this. I showed uh, me downloading it in Raspberry Pi News 55, uh, and I've just started it up, and uh, it takes quite a while to get to this point, probably about 20 minutes or so, which is unusual for a Linux OS. But I think it's just downloading a load of bits uh, and maybe updates and things like that. Uh, and the things it comes up with, uh, there is a, I think it might be this one. Yeah, this is the first thing it comes out with. Uh, and so it says layout, so I went for standard desktop. Then there's overclock, so you can go for two gigahertz. Look, it even tells you the CPU temperature here, which I thought was a nice touch. So set clock speed. Uh, I'm gonna have to put my password in for that. And it will probably, yeah, changes take effect on reboot, that's fair enough. Uh, so I've got my IP address has come up. XRDP is not installed, XRDP service is stopped, SSH access, so we can, uh, if we want remote access, we can enable that on this. It's a bit like Raspberry Pi Config. Display, look, KMS mode, so we can switch to, uh, to fake KMS if we, uh, if we feel we're getting better video performance, and also we can change the GPU memory. Uh, as you can see on the bottom here, start on login, so this is something, I'm going to leave it on for now. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's pretty nice touch. So let's close that bit down. So what are the other two bits we've got? So we've got the software updater. Updated software has been issued since Ubuntu Budgie 2204 was released. So 630 megabytes. So I'm probably going to install that. I'm just going to minimize that for now. Uh, but you can see here that familiarity, browser ballot, I would rather have Chromium. Uh, Firefox is already installed, but you can see here that snap install. So if I want to install it, I can just click on it. It's certainly an OS that holds your hand uh, and sort of takes you through it. Customization, budgie desktop settings, style, widgets, look, icons. Yeah, very customizable. Desktop icons, fonts, windows. Yeah, there's so much you can do in this. Right, I'm not gonna change any of that. Control center. So the nice familiar settings in Ubuntu. I, I always think in the Ubuntu distros, all the settings are really nice and simple to understand. Everything's incredibly logical uh, and kind of where it should be. So you can see all your Wi-Fi there and everything. Let's close that down and go back through. So keyboard shortcuts. Oh yeah, so we've got a load on here already. Control Alt T to open the terminal. I'm used to that on Raspberry Pi OS. Oh yeah, loads of them already done. Updates and extras, drivers, language and inputs, optional tasks, system specifications, Ubuntu Jammy Jellyfish. Uh, it's 1800 it detects. Uh, so like Raspberry Pi OS, this is on my eight gig Pi. So it already overclocks to 1800 by standard. Tells me it's the 64 bit version. Uh, RAM, nice to see I've got 8.2 gig of RAM. Internet access, disk capacity 32 gig. U space 8.6, free space 22. Yeah, just, I mean, everything's just clear in there. You can look at all of that and you aren't left wondering what's doing what. It's, it's pretty standard, right? So let's close that down. And uh, I think I'm gonna do these updates. So install now, and we can tap on the details. We wanna see exactly what's going on. And let's have a look at the top while it's doing all that. So what's these three lines here? Welcome to quick note, oh yeah. So notes, this is files, uh, so the commonly used folders. Notifications, that's gonna be my internet connection. Audio, and what happens if we go to settings? So output device, headphones, uh, which is the way I would normally have it. Uh, and you can see, you can switch it to HDMI. Bluetooth, obviously power, and what's that top one there? Oh, and that's the calendar. And this calls up all your apps. Several pages of apps, look. Now I don't know if these um, are still loading and that's why they haven't got any different icons or if that's how they'll always be. So I showed Cheese in a recent video with my, my webcam and that, it works very well. It's, it's an easy way, it recognized the webcam. I didn't have to do anything to it. Uh, so this, I like all the icons, it's looking nice. Yeah, Office is already installed, look, LibreOffice. Lots based around software, Rhythmbox Music. Plank preferences, Plank is the dock. So if I click on that, that'll be interesting to see what it does. Because I think they're pretty small. 
center. Let's go with a bit bigger. There you go, I think that looks nicer. Center alignment so we can change start, end and center. I'll leave it where it is. Theme transparent, behavior, and docklets. So let's close that down. Oh, I've changed something because it's hiding now, but that's all right. Ah, it was hiding because because this was down there. That so if I put that down there, it doesn't overlap. That's a nice touch. So I'll come back when all those updates are done. Okay, so another day on, and uh, I've been playing around with. Uh, well, I cloned this operating system using PySafe. And uh, I've got that on another SSD and I've installed all the desktop environments, so Mate and KDE and Ubuntu, and I've just been playing around with it. But this is still the fresh one uh, that I've started off with and I wanted to show a few more things. So I always like to look at the folders and see how they look. And you can see that it all looks pretty nicely laid out. It's very simple to understand and uh, you know the icons look fine. Uh, I wanted to see if it supports my printer now generally with Ubuntu, uh, when you go into settings, uh, it will show you your printer. In fact, I could either try settings or I could try typing out printer. Yeah, printers. And they usually see my HP printer on the network. Yeah, well, it's there and it's ready to go. And the experience I've had is I just get a print and it's absolutely fine. So let's go back to those folders and uh, see if it finds my NAS drive. So network, yeah, WD My Cloud. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna work absolutely fine. Public, and all my folders are in there. Last thing I wanted to show before I show all the operating systems was uh, video playback. So let's try Chromium for that, which I've installed in this. Definitely works really nicely. This is a beta version, but I haven't had any issues with Budgie. Although Chromium did take quite a while to start up, but let's give it a try. Okay, so video playback really struggles. Um, it's not good at all uh, at this stage. Let's just try Firefox, because obviously it comes with Firefox installed. The Firefox is still snappier. Let's hope the video playback's better. Yeah, it's struggling pretty badly. Um, but again, it is in beta, so this should improve over time. And I haven't changed anything, I haven't tried to alter any settings, I've just tried to play 1080 and it's completely stopped. So let's close this down and I'll boot up the other operating system, uh, which is basically, a, I cloned this uh, so I didn't mess up with this install and then I just installed every desktop environment I could find. Okay, so once you've installed several different desktop environments, uh, you get to log out of any of the systems and you get this screen. And if I click on this little icon, uh, you can see I've got all sorts installed in here. So if I wanted to say Ubuntu Mate, uh, I can then put my password in and it boots into that desktop environment. So you can see this is Ubuntu Mate and uh, it works differently to a lot of the other systems, um, but works really nicely. It's a, it's a really nice clean operating system uh, and all the folder icons look really nice. I won't go out through every system, um, but the way I've done this is to open a terminal uh, so first of all, I opened a terminal in Budgie, and these are all the commands I used. So to install Ubuntu Mate, I used this one, sudo apt install mate dash desktop environment, and all these extra bits. Uh, some of the others were much less to install. Now you should really do this into an LTS or a long-term support version of Ubuntu, but I wondered what it would be like using a beta version, and uh, actually, mostly, it worked pretty well. Uh, some systems definitely haven't worked, but I just did it out of intrigue, really. Um, but uh, I'll put all of those in the description if you're planning to install any of these into any version of Ubuntu and change your desktop environment. It's funny because logging out is different in every system. So on this one, uh, it will be this here and log out. And that takes you back to this screen. So then you can choose something else. So let's try this one. Now, as I'm in the UK, I'd probably pronounce it UK UI, but let's call it Ukui and uh, see what happens. So as you can see, it comes up with this magnifier. Now, if I hold it over the background, you can see a zoomed in version of the background, but even all the little icons and everything, uh, it's just uh, an accessibility feature. And uh, it seems to come on with every operating system, so I'm not actually sure 
which one installed this by standard, but it, uh, it starts up by default. So let's close that down and just use it normally. Uh, so you can see this looks very nice. A really nice looking operating system. Uh, again, nice icons and everything. So we've got a desktop switcher there, but I'll switch back and uh, let's try uh, where's logout on this. It's probably this one. That's a nice screen. Uh, so log out and let's, let's log back into another one. So say cinnamon. Yeah, some nice colorful icons down the bottom here. Uh, let's see when we hit the start bar. Actually, the magnifier doesn't come up in this operating system, so it's only some operating systems that it seems to come up in. But yeah, this looks very nice, very logical. Again, they're all based on Ubuntu, but uh, they bring their own things. So, uh, you know, if you go into all applications, now that I've got all these uh, desktop environments, they've often introduced different versions of different things. So if I was to type in file, uh, you'll see that, oh, oh so it, it does something weird on the Pi 400 where it turns on either caps lock or num lock. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I've turned all those off now. So let's type in file and you can see PC Man FM, Files Nautilus, Nemo, Thunar, so all sorts of ones. So you can, you can basically try them out and see which ones you think work best for you and you could delete the ones you didn't want. Not quite so sure on those icons, not for me. Right, let's try something else. I've got another video uh, a while ago where I did this in a much older version of Ubuntu. It went through the operating systems a bit more. This is just to show what's there. I'm not going to go through every single one. So log out is probably, oh, there you go. That is a log out button and log out. And last one, let's go for GNOME, which is really your standard Ubuntu. And I really like the way it deals with multiple desktops. So you can see it comes up with this screen. So if I start typing files, you can see that it comes up with all those files options. And I guess if I do browser maybe, yeah, Chromium, Firefox, very nice. Uh, and to switch between the desktop environments, if I press the Windows key, this takes me to the main screen, press it again, and it takes me back and I can switch into another desktop. I really like the way Ubuntu works on this. It did on the previous version, um, but uh, yeah, I think it's a really logical system. And it's one of my favorites now, just the standard Ubuntu one. And so if you want to install any of these desktop environments, if you do Control-Alt-T to open a terminal, and uh, I've got that document. Oh, it doesn't show up on this screen. So if I press the Windows key, let's go to the Files app because I've got it on my desktop. Some operating systems hide what's on the desktop, but we can find it here. So Desktop Environments, and all you would do is just pick one of these. So say, for instance, Lubuntu, copy that, and pop it in here, and then just hit Enter, and pop your password in, accept it. And uh, when you log out and log back in, it will give you another desktop environment you can sign back into. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.